Introduction to Prologue. My A2 students uh, will find this quite different to the other languages that they've been studying, but it's a really interesting language and is quite widely used in artificial intelligence. So about Prologue. Prologue is a declarative language like SQL. You know, it just says, give me a coffee. It doesn't care about the steps that are involved or how it gets done. It just wants the job done. It's used in artificial intelligence. The most famous example is IBM's Watson supercomputer. So the program logic. On the one side, you've got organized data, which are called facts. And like a board game rules, you've got rules. This is kept in one document. And then in the other area, you can make queries. So you can literally see in this example, the two areas are split up. So as you see on the one side, you put your facts and your rules. On the other side, you have your queries. I'm using called something called Swy Prolog. In the comments, I will mention how you can download this program. It does have a few quirks, but it's the easiest uh, version. And most importantly, it's free. So today we're gonna do something based on the TV show Friends. Um, so let's have a little look at this. You can see here there's a slash and a star, and that begins a comment, and at the end, there's a star and a slash to end the comment. Some versions of Prolog don't require this ending, but I found that it's not always that forgiving, so it's good practice to put the star and the slash at the end as well. And literally, this little bit of, uh, these facts mean that Joey is a character. Please note that there are no uppercase characters. You'll find out why later, but this is really important. Right, let's uh, actually do a bit of the coding. So to start with, uh, we're going to create a new document where we're gonna put our facts. On the Mac, uh, built-in is the Quartz editor. It's a little bit quirky, but hey, does the job. Um, also, just note that you just type these things in and uh, off you go. It puts a bit of color in there for you. Right, now let's uh, query it. Got to remember, it doesn't auto load. You've absolutely got to put it in the inquiry. Let's see what happens now if I don't load up the file. Oh dear, so what do I do? Hmm. Right, notice the consult here. So if we want to consult with the document, we have to use the consult and the editing is completely separate. In fact, you can even use your own text editor if you want. All right, let's uh, put a query in. Let me think. Yes, character. Is Chandler a character? Don't forget your full stops. That's also very important, especially if you're coming from Python. James character, sadly not. Okay, so that's the first part. And uh, let's start to have a look at that. You might want to pause the video at this point and replay so you can do it yourself. Right, now that you've had a play with that and you've got the idea that, you know, a very simple fact is one thing, let's add some more factor. Let's see who likes each other. Now, this is very loosely remembered from the show. So I hope I'm not giving you spoilers, but uh, Ross definitely liked Rachel and Rachel definitely liked Ross. Monica liked Chandler in the end and Chandler liked Monica. Chandler liked Phoebe and Phoebe liked Joey and Monica liked Joey as well. And Joey liked Rachel. Hmm. So those are some facts and we can interrogate those too. Now, there's a very good reason I didn't use capital letters. That's because anything that begins with a capital letter is a variable. So if I write who likes with a capital W, then it becomes a variable. And for most of the stuff we're doing in queries, it acts like a wildcard. Hence the joker. Right, let's play with that then. Likes. Rachel likes, who does Rachel like? Oh yes, Ross, let's see if that's true. Oh, very good. Let's try something else. Mm. Who likes 
Joey. Now, the capital W means it's a variable. Now, once we've done that, you must remember after the first answer, if you want the other answers, you actually need to add a semicolon. Right, let's have a look now at some rules. So far, we've just been putting some facts in, but facts without rules mean that this is quite a difficult language to handle. Now, colon dash is like an if statement. There are people who will tell you it's not an if statement, but as far as we're concerned for beginners, it's close enough to an if statement to be fine. Comma means and, and a semicolon means or. To be dating, both people have to like each other. So the comma is an and. So in this case, we put dating, colon, slash, likes, comma, and likes. So they both got to like each other. Let's have a look at that now. Right, I've put that in. Let's consult. So dating. I've put this uh, dating in. So let's see who remembered Ross and Rachel. I pretty much remember they were dating. True. Let's go and have a look at something else. Let's look at Rachel versus Ross. Of course, it's going to be true because it's got to be both ways. Right. For there to be attraction, only one person has to like the other. Don't forget to press semicolon to see more answers. So. For this, we put the code attraction x comma y likes. Notice the semicolon. That means or in this case. Look at this new way of doing things. So now we're looking for attraction rather than dating. So let's see who, where there is attraction with Joey, with Rachel, Phoebe, and Monica. Let's try it the other way around. Let's see what happens when we're doing dating. Sadly, poor old Joey is dating nobody. Well, let's see if we could do it another way. In this case, because the rules are very simple, actually, it's just two commands to actually find this, isn't it? But as prologue gets more complicated, you can imagine how these rules become incredibly useful. Right, now let's do a little bit of bug swatting. I've deliberately chosen a few of the problems I've come across while I've been learning a bit about Prolog to have a look. Now, what I would suggest you do is pause at this point. I will give you five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Right, you've had a good go, have you? You've tried your absolute best. Right, now let's look at the answers to these questions. So number one, what did I do wrong? Well, I put a space after attraction. Just enter the command again without the space. Otherwise, you'll get this rather nasty set of little errors. Okay. Second one, I put a capital R in Ross, making it a variable. Very painful, this. Now, there are complicated ways of allowing data to have our um, capital letters, including using speech marks and things like that. But it's a bit beyond the basic tutorials to go into that kind of thing. Just be assured, as a language, it would be a bit defunct without capital letters. But, and it is possible to deal with it. But it takes a little bit more effort. So, number three, I forgot the full stop. Be careful. Press Control D to get back, and I mean that both in Mac and Windows. Just be careful, because if you press it twice, it quits the entire program. As you may have guessed, this program's a little bit fragile in place. And the last one, I forgot to consult with the file before starting. So it just pulls up all sorts of things. So those are some common bugs that I came across and things you should be aware of. Um, if you'd like to find out a few more things about Prolog uh, beyond these very basic examples, there's two very good uh, repositories. Again, I've put the things in the comments for you to have a look at. Enjoy.